Hello all. Right, a um, bit of progress on some boring stuff unfortunately. We've got a workshop full of cars, the CL55 hasn't had any work done on it in three or four months, and neither has the Clio. So those two video series are definitely continuing. Um, we've got a new ramp going in very, very soon, two or three days. So once that ramps in and few of our chappies are back off holidays, we can start progressing. I can get some free time um, and those videos will start rolling. However, I have been commuting to the workshop and back in the lovely lanes of Kent um, for the past seven months and I can't take the road the, the ride comfort anymore. It's too uncomfortable. I am gonna go insane. Um, so the the smart diesel, which I'll put a little picture up here, will be up for sale. I've done all the maintenance items, new clutch, new clutch actuator, uh, shock absorbers, all the service items, wiper blades, Android Auto head unit, etc. It's a nice, you know, it's a nice city car, but as everybody knows, the road quality around here has deteriorated to the point where uh, it's getting a bit ridiculous now. So I have changed vehicle to a W203 C320 CDI. Now, um, I just can't help myself and get a big engine, I'm sorry. I was gonna get a 220, um, but I got the bigger V6 diesel. Now, the bad news for me is obviously my fuel bill will be higher and my road tax will be higher. Um, at the moment, I'm not affected by ULEZ, but that may happen. The good news is for you guys, you're going to get to follow me whilst I do some performance upgrades to it. Now, I can't help myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but we're going to do some stuff to this. Uh, I think we're going to try and aim for 350 reliable horsepower. Um, so yeah, follow us uh, on a little mini series really, because it's not going to be major, major, lots of detail. Um, it's going to be really high level um, and you can follow us on this journey. Uh, on to the lovely beige mobile. And here is the beige mobile. It is so beige and nice. 84,000 miles or 86,000 miles, full service history. And I've gone through it, it has everything, glow plugs, cabin filters, blah, 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 tires, brakes, big stack of paperwork, less than, just let's say just, let's just say 2,000 pounds. It was essentially close to 2,000 pounds. No, it's a full elegance spec. Have a look at that. Elegance, which sort of makes it better sort of for the tuning because it's got elegance wheels, which are fairly rare because everyone wanted the sport pack, etc. But I quite like that. I think it makes the car a little bit better. And uh, of course, over an avant-garde or sport, it's got softer, squishy suspension. Now, obviously they're all quite old now and all the suspensions have gotten a bit squishy. A bit of a scrape mark there, which we'll ignore. Um, but this car is basically unmolested. It is uh, really clean, <laughs> really clean. I mean, um, you know, it's it's clean. There's nothing, nothing to, nothing major to deal with. Now the, Interior is in nice condition. Yeah, we've got just a few bits and bobs. Of course, um, the, the MOT histories have mentioned slight oil leak for the past three or four years, and I parked it on my driveway, and the oil leak's not slight. It's clearly got a leaking oil cooler in the V. Now, on this car, that job's about nine hours, plus a couple of hundred pounds in parts. You've got to change the cooler. Don't bother trying to do it without changing the cooler because you will be kicking yourself. You've got to do that eight hours labor again because it wasn't the gasket that was leaking, it was the cooler. Uh, additionally, the coolers tend to corrode on the bottom half of them. Um, it's just not worth taking the risk. So unfortunately, I'm going to be doing an oil cooler on this at some point in the near future. However, we're going to do a few bits. So we're going to do a bigger turbo. The frame of the turbo will actually be the same, but the, the housing will be bored out and the wheel billet, it'll have a compressor, billet compressor wheel that's larger and a billet inducer wheel that is larger. Um, so that's going to be interesting and that's going to give us lots more air at lower boost pressures because the turbo will be flowing better. We're going to do an intercooler and we're going to do water methanol mainly for charge cooling because the earlier versions of this OM642 have pistons that like to crack if you push too much power. So we're going to aim for about 350 horsepower. Um, I'm going to cut to the video of us looking at the intercooler next. Okay, right, one intercooler. We're going to make this fit um, once the ramp that's currently 
yeah, so I try not to look at that. Um, good thing about this intercooler, we've got loads of really chunky metal, so we're going to put the water methanol nozzle on the outlet of the intercooler because you want a greater differential of temperature across the intercooler as possible, so you want nice hot air coming out the turbo going into the intercooler being cooled by the air as much as possible and then the additional cooling happening by the water methanol system and then off to the engine um that may not be the orientation that goes on in the car but let's just say it flows that way just for the sake of it um here's some experimentation we're doing with how we're going to attach the intercooler um that's the original factory boost connection i've measured the inside diameter of the hose it's either that or we're going to clamp onto the I'm going to modify this and clamp onto this as long as we can cut these little nubs in such a way little nubs here in such a way where they don't cause a boost leak but anyway that that will be something we we look at and we'll touch upon um so yes right so what we're going to do before we do any tuning we've data logged the car and a 14 and a half degree day is a lovely sunny day today look at that okay so here is our data log on the bottom we've got uh, the black line that's engine rpm uh, the red line which is the one we're paying attention to is intake air temperature from the intake air temperature sensor of the car the blue line is boost pressure in kilopascals which is basically bar so 248 is 2.48 bar um, that's an absolute sensor, so that's including the one bar of atmosphere that we have pushing down on us already. And the green line is engine load, just to represent where full throttle started. So um, we start off at 1600 RPM, locked in fourth gear. We go to the, not quite the red line, but the point that the gearbox wants to uh, initiate a gear change, essentially, and then we let off the throttle. Um, so... Uh, for the data logging purposes, we're starting off at 27 degrees intake temperature and we end up at 54 with an ambient temperature of 14 and a half degrees. Now, um, we're not going to be able to calculate exactly the efficiency of the intercooler because ambient temperature will pay a part in how efficient the cooler is. Obviously, if it's colder outside, um, the temperature difference will be lower from start to finish so we've got we start off at 27 we're at we end up at 54 so there's a temperature rise in that case of 27 degrees celsius now if it's colder that rise will be less even if the difference is um less because the intercooler will transfer the air more effectively the only way i can effectively calculate the efficiency of the intercooler is by monitoring the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature independently and then taking into consideration the ambient air temperature. However, I'm not going to be adding sensors and things for this because it's, not, it's outside the scope of these videos. So um, we're going to say 27 degrees, uh, an ambient temperature of 14 and a half degrees on that pull. We'll do the same pull again. Um, hopefully when we've changed the intercooler, the ambient temperature is the same, but we'll recreate all the other conditions. So air conditioning off, headlights off, um, make sure that there's a lot of airflow over the uh, intercooler so that there's no heat soak, etc. when we're starting. And, um, and yeah, so that. Something to note as well, we've coded in uh, full manual mode in this car, ignore the A, um, so that when we're doing the data logging and stuff, the car doesn't want to constantly change gear. Uh, a is agility mode that was in the software on the 7229s but never actually used or implemented as a feature. It's more like Sport Plus in the more modern models. Um, something else to consider is you can always tell when the steering column module has been changed on one of these ah, because they don't tighten the pinch bolt properly. Uh, so that's super annoying and has to be fixed. Um, but yeah. <laughs>